Let's make it a good day. Coming up today, something very unusual happened on Dancing with the Stars last night, and it has nothing to do with Tyra Banks' wardrobe. We will talk about that too. But anyway, it's all in the hot dish. Then, we fell in love with her during four weddings and a funeral. Now Andy McDowell is teaming up with her daughter for a new Netflix series. They'll join us live. And from magical moments to crazy crowds, we're taking you through our trip to the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Good morning to you. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Please say hello to my sidekick sister from another mister in TJ Maxx's Employee of the Month. She's the max to the minimum. Kendall Mark, everybody. Just a maximista over here. You're a maximista. Mm-hmm. I really am. I love the TJ Maxx. I do too. I love the TJ and I love the home goods. I get like lost in the pillow section. Yes. And again, I call it the... Uh, the home goods lesson. If you see something at home goods, buy it. Mm-hmm. If you're vacillating, don't vacillate because what happens is you're going to leave, you're going to go home, ultimately you're going to regret not buying said item, then you're going to go back to said home goods and said item will be purchased by someone named Vera. Mm-hmm. So it, just buy it. If you see a frame or a little horse statue and you're like, oh, that's a cute pony, buy it. Take it home. Don't wait. Don't vacillate. How you doing? Because Vera will not. Vera won't She'll bring get it, it back. No. I'm good. I've missed you. I I have missed you thanks to Pierre. Uh, I feel a little threatened. You and Pierre were very popular. People <laughs> loved the sports guy. Uh, who doesn't love the news? Can I tell you, I love Pierre. And I know that our new president here at the station, Marion, Mim, Davey, Kessler, Colby, Carrington, Rowan, Mim Jong Un. She doesn't listen to us. She doesn't care. Uh, but if she was listening to us, I would tell her to put Pierre in everything. I love Pierre. <laughs> I want him in every show. I'm a huge fan of his. So thanks to Pierre for filling in uh, mm-hmm. uh, for us, for me on, on uh, uh, what is it, Friday? Friday. Friday, yes. yeah. The then days you, all melt together when you're at Disney. That's right. And then on Monday, we had a brand new show that we pre recorded, and it featured photographer Eric as a squirrel. So again, I'm not saying, but I'm saying, I think we're going to submit that episode for next year's Emmy. Oh, good. I liked my dress in that one. Yeah, you look very nice in that. Thank but, you. But uh, thanks to Pierre. I greatly appreciate it. As Kendall said, uh, we were at Walt Disney World for the 50th anniversary. My goodness, friends, I could spend the whole hour telling you stories. Uh, R-rated stories, PG-13 stories, G stories, uh, but we don't have time. Mm. But just know shenanigans ensued. Shenanigans. And it was a good trip. It was Yes, it was all positive. And you know what else is positive? We have breaking, breaking Adele news. <gasps> we have breaking Adele. That's why I love, again, hashtag love that this show is live. Moments before we came on the air, in my little earpiece, Peter, the late Peter Jennings told me uh, that, no, all kidding aside, Adele tweeted this on her Instagram 58 minutes ago, and it already has close to 3 million views, new music, October 15th. What day of the week is that? Somebody just tell me. What? Should I just play it? You know what? We're just going to go rogue. Here, let me just put this up. Ted, Leo, get ready. I'm just going to place. It's a piano. That's it. Oh. Exciting, wasn't it? Sounds like church. Yeah. Well, it did. It kind of sounded like it. Oh, okay song um but october 15th is called easy on me and it's a black and white video it looks beautiful adele looks fantastic we've been waiting i can't wait for this i wanted to go back on tour still one of the best concerts i've ever seen i can't wait to bring my mom yes but uh yeah adele 
There we go. That just broke minutes ago, 48 minutes ago. And now everybody on the Insta, they're dying. They're like, this is not a drill. This is not a drill. <laughs> and executive producer Jeff had been hearing rumors that this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. He's very plugged in to the music scene. He knows all the things. He knows all the things. We actually see I would usually make a joke here about executive producer Jeff, but we're in a new era of our relationship now that we've traveled to Disney together. Does he have something over you? No. Is it, was there a photo? Or no, something? I actually have photos of him now that I'm oh. holding over. Okay, got it. Hashtag fun Jeff. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. <laughs> warning, warning, fun Jeff has arrived. Fun Jeff has arrived. Woohoo! That's right. Limited time only, like the McRib. <laughs> First up, it was Britney night on Dancing with the Stars, and the drama was cranked up a few notches for one couple. Peloton instructor Cody and his dancing partner Cheryl both have the COVID and are in quarantine, but they weren't eliminated. Instead, they danced from their homes. And I don't, I didn't see this. I don't know how this works. Roll it, Leo. Okay. Okay. This looks like like auditions. You know what I mean? Oh wow. That. Oh oh the fan. I always looks I like some good fan choreography. Hey, uh, that's in, uh, that's ingenuity right there. You got the show has to go on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So bravo to them. Well, and if, I mean, and since the Cody had said earlier, at least, I don't know how he's feeling now, but he had said it, he wasn't as feeling as sick this time, but you still have COVID. Yeah. I mean, good for you for dancing. Well, they kept it together. They still, they scored the lowest of the night, but had enough fans uh, to vote them into surviving next week. So that's all you really want mm -hmm. until you start feeling better. But right. I would love to make fun of it because it is visually funny, but hey, Good, good on the producers. As far as the other dancers go, here's a look at some of our favorites. Local guy Alan Burston and Amanda Klutz. Hi, Alan. Love you. The two danced the cha-cha to Britney Circus and tied for the highest score of the night. She is really good. Again, I really want to, you know, be snarky because she was a former Rockette, but... Yeah. I love Alan, so I'm not going to bust on it. Well, and, and like she's look at just look at her. Yeah, I know. In the end, it was Christine from Bling Empire who was sent home packing. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Really? Yeah, I mean, she, there's some really go actually good dancers on the yeah. show this year. Plus, she, I I like her because she's dramatic on Bling Empire, but she's not like a super lovable person. Got it. Next in the dish, Saturday Night Live returned for season 47 over the weekend. Owen Wilson was the host, and they did a parody of uh, our time slot competitor, The View. Let's look at this. Ladies, please, enough, enough, enough. Ma'am, hello. Uh, I'm sorry. I need to inform you of your COVID test results. <laughs> oh, hi. Here? Yes, ma'am. I just received them, and this is where you are, so I brought them here. I'm going to have to confirm some information. Okay. Do we have to do this on air? Yeah, it has to be on TV for... HIPAA reasons, we either can't tell anybody or have to tell everybody. No middle ground. Okay. Can I have your full name? Uh, Didi Calrissian. Correct. Date of birth? Um, May 13th. Mm -hmm. May 13th what? 1982. Didi, you're younger than you look. Thanks. Wait. Hey. And what have you done in the last 72 hours? Like in general? Yes. Um, came to work, Googled myself, I don't know. Okay, well, unfortunately, your COVID test came back positive, so I'm afraid you're going to have to come oh, with no. me. Okay. Well, we bye, everybody. <clears throat> okay. That was all right, I guess. The show featured three new cast members and ten new writers. <laughs> Maybe we should reconsider that. Anyway, ratings were still down 35% compared to last year's premiere. That was under uh, extraordinary circumstances. It was the first normal -ish show out of COVID. Chris Rock was hosting. It's a little apples and oranges, but mm -hmm. still, I don't know. The new Joe Biden is funny. Yeah, I. He's uh, a new guy. I didn't see it. Yeah. I heard all about, though, the Casey Musgraves performance, where yeah. it was just like her and her guitar. That's it. 
That's all hey you girl. need. If you're that talented, that's all, all you need is a guitar. If you look like that. That's right. Next in the dish. Last week we told you about the explosive new memoir from my ex-wife, jokingly, Katie Couric. And the backlash has been swift. According to page six, Katie is banned from promoting her book on CBS. Now that's just a rumor. We don't know. In the book, she talked about her time at the CBS Evening News where ratings uh, kept her in third place. And at one time, they tried to get her to move to the morning show. It was so bad. She was like, uh, no. She also referred to her ex-boss, Les Moonvis, as a close talker with bad breath. <laughs> Katie had been in talks to appear on CBS Sunday morning until that was allegedly scrapped. I have a hot take about this that I don't know if a lot of people will agree with. I, it's fine. And people, and let me preface it by saying, I know people will do an eye roll because I like Katie Couric, but I would have no problem busting on her. I've done it before. Here's the deal. All of these people in media uh, that are pearl clutching and falling on the fainting couch because Katie's not a girl's girl. And she looked after her own career on the network level. And she wasn't very friendly to competitors because she wanted to hold on to her job. Save me your faux outrage. I've been in this business long enough to know that a big majority of folks in this industry are sharks. So save me. Save me the criticizing of Katie Kirk because you've probably done it yourself, especially in the business where sadly, Older women in the business have to look over their shoulder for younger women, which sets up a horrible jealousy um, a dynamic. I, I've, I've watched that that dynamic play over and over again about 30 times. And I myself, let me tell you, I have people that I still talk to that I know tried to sabotage my career. There are a lot more sharks in this water than there are guppies. So all the sharks going, wow, Katie's not a girl's girl and, she's and she wanted to protect your job, save me, Sally. Save me your faux outrage and your pearl clutching. Because if Katie had not laid out all of this dirty laundry, and think of it, Katie's basically admitting that she's not perfect. If she hadn't laid out the dish, you know what everyone would say about her book? Oh, well, this is boring. She just talks about her journalism. Nobody wants to read that. Everybody <laughs> says they want to read highbrow crap, but they don't. They really don't. They want to read the dish. They want to know how Katie really felt about Mervy Pervy Matt. They want to know what Katie really felt about her crappy time at CBS. And any of these media, I'm not talking about us regular, but any of the media folks coming down on her, big eye roll because you have probably sabotaged somebody else to keep your job. Save me. That's the tea. Yeah. And I'll never list off the people who've tried to sabotage me. I will own a book and then they'll sue me. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> more hot topics, more hot dish. Wait until you hear why Seinfeld fans are livid with Netflix. It's definitely not nothing to them. Then, she is just simply a movie star. Andy McDowell is moving to the small screen for her next project. And it's with her daughter. That's right. They'll join us live to tell us all about it. And calling all Chicago PD fan, Patrick John Flugler is on the show today. And we, of course, have to talk about his Red Wing Minnesota slash Kendall connection. That and more when we come back. This is the dress you wore at the Golden Globes, yeah. which was, I think, started trending when you were on, <laughs> the, red, on the red carpet. Were you uh, surprised by the reaction to this? I well, love it. Well, you know, here's the thing. We've all been struggling. It's mm. been a couple years of a lot of yoga pants. Yeah. And, you know, I was going to the Golden Globes, even though it was very controlled. And uh, I work with a woman named Jane Ross, and she pulled that out of a bag, and I was like, there is no way I am wearing that dress, Jane Ross. She goes, just try it on. And you know what? Here's Bye. the thing. It's made by Alex Perry, who's an Australian. And that is what we call commando. And I mean, there's nothing underneath that dress. And I mean nothing. And the beauty of it is when a dress actually fits you so well, and you don't need any support anywhere, but the dress is the support, that's why I felt so great in it, because it's unbelievably beautiful. It really is. Unbelievably. Also, by the way, Alex Perry made this dress. I kind of like a shoulder. We Mommy like a likes shoulder. a shoulder. We like a shoulder, but we're not completely... Mommy likes a shoulder. Commando now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. 
The great Jamie Lee Curtis with James Corden. Jamie Lee is out promoting the new Halloween Kills, which opens at the end of the month. Hey, next in the dish, we're getting a little teaser from the SJP and the folks behind the Sex and the City reboot. And just like that, HBO Max just released this a few hours ago. Look. It's Sarah Jessica. Hello from New York City, Fifth Avenue, shooting as we speak the next chapter of Sex and the City, or as we like to call it, and just like that, with some beloved friends. But in the meantime, and just like that, will premiere in December on HBO Max. Ciao. Ciao, I love you. And just like that, we'll debut in December over there on HBO Max. Every time I see something about it, I just get more and more excited. Mm -hmm. Look, I want Samantha to be in it. She's not. We all have to move on. Just like Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston will never get back together. We just <laughs> have to move on. No, they're never going to. Okay. But I, we just have to move on. And I'm ready to accept a whole new era. Mm -hmm. Friends come and go for a reason. Yep. Right? Yep. It's a very real thing. And I hope that's reflected in the show. Yeah, they've done a great job of promoting without teasing anything. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like not Absolutely. giving anything away. I know. And, and we don't know the plots. We've seen pictures of them. But where are they in their life? Where's Carrie and Big? How's their marriage? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, what, what, do they have a, do they have like a dog or a tiny human? I don't know. Or a ferret. Or a I mean, ferret. And they could have a ferret. They you could know? have a ferret. I, I, I own one, but that's a whole other story. Our next guests are a mother and daughter duo who have teamed up in a new Netflix limited series. It follows a young mother struggling to get by. Here, look at this. Come back to the TV, everybody. A clip from Maid. Well, we just need to get a copy of her mortgage so that we can prove to the tenants in her house that she owns her house. Could you please help us out with that? Without identification, I, I, I can't really do anything. I think we can both agree that I'm a real person sitting here. I've got real skin and real hair and... I don't want to embarrass you, but these babies are real. <laughs> I think you can vouch for my identity. And, you know, just type in to your little screen over there and pull my mortgage up. <laughs> Can't you, sweetheart? Hmm. Last four digits of your social. Attaboy. Five, three, eight, it's one of the reasons it has a near-perfect score. <laughs> On Rotten Tomatoes, that's made. It's on Netflix right now. Please welcome to the show, the two stars of the show, the great Andy McDowell and Margaret Qualley, everybody. Good morning, ladies. Hi. Andy, I set it up a little bit, and I don't want to give away too much, but can you lay the groundwork from, for the audience? Where do we meet these two ladies when we press play? Oh, well... It's well, you you will my uh, Margaret plays Alex, and uh, you really are following her journey. My my part is to is to help tell the journey of Alex and my the, the having to deal with her mother who is so out of control and and really desperately needs mental some kind of help. Um, really is about telling the story of Alex Alex's journey through poverty with a child through emotional abuse and having to work a system that's next to impossible to work. Um, so that's, that's really the journey. And, you, and this brilliant, this brilliant, young, intelligent, gorgeous woman who deserves to be at college and fighting her way to get there. Margaret, I always try to start an interview with a, com with a compliment. And as I, before the show, I was looking through reviews and rightfully so, you are just being celebrated how did you find Alex within yourself? What was, what was the process like of crafting? And, and what was the most difficult part of wrapping your brain around her? Huh. Um, you know, I think the, the most challenging part was probably playing a, a mother because I'm not a mother. Um, and, uh, and so it was really important to me that I made the young girl Riley who was playing my daughter feel comfortable and safe and um, so I tried to bond up with her as much as I could and and I lucked out because she's a real angel and so we had a blast together um, but that was probably the the hardest part but also the most rewarding and Andy was it what was it like for you on a personal level watching Margaret just kill it I mean just knock it out of the park 
I don't think I was uh, uh, all the way. I didn't understand how beautiful the work was until I watched her because I had so much on my shoulders yeah. to do my performance. But I will say, I came into this with my daughter playing, being the lead actress, and also being her mother. I had to keep my mouth shut about anything <laughs> I thought and just follow her lead because she was the lead. That was really interesting for me. And watching her work with Riley at first, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is what she's going to make happen. She's really going to make this child who did not want to perform, she's going to make this child do it. She's okay, make it wasn't sure it like a, I wasn't like f forcing a child no, into labor. But, I was no, I mean the opposite. Like happy dances and okay, okay. No, I know, but the opposite. It's like the child was given so much space. It was like everything had to stop if Riley was not ready because Sarah Margaret was protecting her, and it really elevated the whole show because then this child became a par really important part of the show, and yeah. it just made everything that much more elevated it she elevated the show because of her decisions well, and watching her do that i you know was just like oh so that's what she's doing okay all well, right that's what's going to happen here well, <laughs> and it was it was the it was yeah. it was because i was like oh i can't believe she's doing this okay that's what she's doing well bravo bravo <laughs> bravo to the both but of it you it was great everybody watching go uh, go Thank go you. binge this tonight go don't watch anything else go watch made congratulations to the both of you and thanks for coming on today yeah. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Thank you. Andy McDowell and Margaret Qualley. Go watch it. Made is available now on Netflix. Who couldn't relate to that last exchange between mother and <laughs> daughter? Everybody. Ma. Yeah. Come on, Mom. <laughs> Returning to the Katie Couric thing. Now, I didn't mean oh, to God, get so upset about that. But I will just tell you. I will just tell you again. Did you get again. a little defensive of your ex-wife? No, it, you know, it's not a, even about Katie. It's about hypocrisy mm -hmm. of these people coming down on her. Because I have watched both men and women be horrible to each other. And this whole thing of Katie's not a woman's woman, please. I have watched women go on the air over my 25 years and be like, I'm, I'm a girl's girl. And then I have personally watched them walk over to the executive producer and say, um, Margaret has Margaret seven scripts be. today. And I have four scripts today. We call it script counting. I have watched that happen repeatedly. We're awful. To, women are awful to each other sometimes in this business. It's not a truth you want to hear, but it is the truth. And men, too. We're, I mean, everybody, they're not everybody, but there's a large chunk of people because it's a competitive business. It's <laughs> dirty. It's not clean. And it's just the hypocrisy that drives me nuts. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Katie didn't like every woman she worked with. That doesn't make her not a girl's girl. It makes her a human, you know? Mm -hmm. I haven't liked everybody I've worked with. I've been competitive with people. You know why? My own insecurities. I haven't liked people. You know why? Because I think, oh, they're really good. I am competitive. Mm -hmm. Next in the dish, Seinfeld has made the move to Netflix, and some diehard fans are really mad. Netflix messed with the shows. Here's why. Netflix has messed with the show's ratio when they converted it to widescreen, which in human English means sometimes it cuts off the show's visual jokes. For instance, George is talking about a pothole in one episode, but on the Netflix version, there's no pothole to be seen. The Simpsons had the same problem when they moved to Disney+. Plus. I get it. Mm -hmm. And these people, if you're a Seinfeld fan, you know this show backwards and forwards, sideways. It would be like me, like if they re-edited Dallas, I'd be like, oh, you can't see Bobby's desk or Sue Ellen's bottle of whiskey. <laughs> she only drink vodka, by the way, but yeah. Okay. I would be, you know, I can see. Yeah, I remember when the whole thing happened with The Simpsons, too. And it's like, if you miss the joke because you can't see the joke, yeah. duh. Duh. Can't believe it. It seems like a rookie mistake for Netflix, right. doesn't it? It's, it just seems like, come on. Yeah, everybody it, gets it. Just put it yeah. in the weird box thing. We've, we're used to it. Good news, though, our ratio is just fine. You can see the microphone. You can see Battle Cat and Skeletor right there. Thank you, Leo. Look at that fine directing. Thank you. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. Back in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. Everyone, thank you. Well, our next guest hails 
from the great city of Red Wing, Minnesota, and has made a name for himself on the primetime show. Chicago PD as Officer Adams. Look, look at this. Need to clear the air. All right. Adams. When you ran up on me after I shot Barella, you could have asked me if I was okay, if I was hurt. That's not what you did. Adam, listen. I said, what did you do? Yeah, I did. What did you do? Kim, one of the many reasons that I fell in love with you is that I felt like you believed in me. Like you believed in me in a way that nobody in my entire life has. I did. Even me. I do. I'm not so sure. Chicago PD, Wednesday nights on NBC. Moment. Please welcome to the show Red Wings' very own Patrick John Fluger. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Jason. Okay, Patrick, I'm going to start uh, just like I just did with Andy. I'm going to start with a compliment. I, I love you and I hate you all at the same time. You have the best hair. <laughs> you have the best hair on NBC. You have the best hair on NBC. Look at I that. Let my, I let my uh, bed do it this morning, buds. That is. Fin I hope you're okay with that. That is total. I don't. Yeah. What, what, whatever. We're just. We're just. Uh, we're glad to have you. Uh, I, we were talking in the break. Nine seasons. Nine seasons. What does that feel like? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> Nothing but gratitude. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Here's the thing: is you'd think after nine seasons, things would slow down. You know, people would be distracted with with their own things but i'll tell you what everybody comes to work ready to to make the best product that we possibly can i mean people are still passionate about it we got a great crew that works their butts off and the cast too i mean everybody just you know really wants to make a good show and i i, I feel blessed that that everybody's still trying as hard as they are my friend, were you surprised by the success? Because, I mean, I have people in my family that love all, love all the Chicago shows. Does it just blow you away? I mean, people, as you said, they're invested. They love these. I mean, it, you know, it makes sense to bet on Dick Wolf. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's, uh, well, he's got, doesn't he got like nine shows yep. in prime time right now? Yep. He's, it makes sense to bet on Dick Wolf. So I guess, like, I'm not entirely shocked, but at the same time, um, I didn't necessarily think this would be my life being on a hit TV show and you know seeing it flourish for nine years let's talk about the new season where do we find you this year uh you know he um for a long time one of his partners Kim Burgess they uh have gone back and forth you know on again off again um and this year she she ended up adopting a child and they've got what I would describe as kind of a complicated relationship. It's both romantic and at the same time platonic at this point. And, uh, but they just, they care about each other. They love each other. I, I don't know, it, it's, it seems odd, but I, I really like playing this, this kind of off kilter relationship. And um, so I think he's just kind of leaning into home and family and, and trying to, uh, round out his life a little bit more. You and I are kind of opposite as far as uh, I was born and raised in the Chicago area and moved here. You were born and raised here and work in Chicago. What is, yeah. it, it, what is it like filming, in, in my opinion, one of the great cities in our country, uh, the, the good people of Chicago? What's it like filming there, my friend? Chicago is just a fantastic place. I, I, Dick you always says it, but Dick Wolf always says it, but I feel like Rahm Emanuel tried to claim a couple of years ago when I met him that he came up with it, that Chicago's like the most American, American city. Blue collar, hardworking. Yep. Um, you know, the, the food scene is amazing. <laughs> There's music coming in and out of town all the time. But, the, uh, but you know, the, the lead character of our show, we always say this, is Chicago. It's... Um, it's its own animal, you know, and I couldn't agree with you more. It's one of the great American cities, hands down. Yeah. Hands down. I feel very lucky to be here. It's a great one. Uh, it's just a great, yeah. Oprah said it once, everyone would live there if it wasn't for the weather. And I think she's right. Because there's, <laughs> there, oh, and speaking of that, Patrick, back me up because people, 
and you've experienced it, both of them like I have, people don't understand lake effect snow. When I moved here, everyone's like, oh my goodness, Minnesota, it's snowing. I go, no, 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 no. You haven't experienced snow until you're on uh, Lakeshore Drive and you feel the lake effect snow horizontally uh, attacking your face. Am I right on that? So Minnesota is maybe about 15 to 20 degrees colder when I jump off the plane when I fly there, but it's a dry cold. It's yes. something you can escape from. Yes. The cold coming off the lake here, it gets inside your bones. Yes. And I, I couldn't agree more. That wind, you round some of those corners. Oh. And, you know, I've seen people fall over. That's not actually a joke. <laughs> I've seen people get knocked down yeah. by this wind. Chicago PD's Wednesday nights. We have more with Patrick when we come back. Kendall's joining us. Kendall's connection with Patrick and Red Wing when we return. Back in a moment. Stay with us, my friend. Nothing like lace effects, no. Welcome back. We are back with Chicago PD's Patrick John Fluger. And joining us now is Patrick's former neighbor. So we have two of Red Wing's finest on one television screen. <laughs> it's our own Kendall Mark. Hi, Patrick. What's up, dude? Nice to see you. Good to see you too. Um, by the way, I did let Jason know about that time that you had to come over and remove the dead animal from my mom's yard. Do you remember that? We need to take the shovel over and you, sorry. Yeah, we used to be neighbors for do you, real. Do you remember that, Patrick? <laughs> I gotta tell you, I've known Kendall since I was yay big. Mm -hmm. I think her, there's her, pictures. Uh, her mom and dad are like some best friends of uh, my mom and dad. So we, we've known each other for forever. So go ahead, we'll spend the rest of the time, I'll plug the show, but go ahead and all the dirty laundry you have on Kendall. Go ahead, start now. That isn't any. I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, I was asking Kendall Patrick during the break, what is it like, my friend, coming back home to Red Wing? Because, you know, Minnesotans are very, you know, they don't like to make a big scene about things, but you're a big deal. So what's it like walking around the streets of Red Wing? Oh, I, you know what? I feel I feel no different. I mean, it, it's uh, like you said, Minnesotans. They're pretty. They're pretty low key. They're pretty chill. And so I, I feel no different. I feel um, I don't know. It's it's always a joy to come home. It's relaxing. Well, speak you know, there's no pressure. Well, speaking of Red Wing, Kendall. Yeah. Okay. By the way, I, I have a quiz for you, Patrick. But before we get to you that. Uh, oh gosh, <laughs> this is nerve wracking. Before we get to that, I also want you to know that when you're not in Red Wing, people constantly confuse me for your sister, as you know, Allison, and they'll like talk to me about you. And then I slowly <laughs> yeah, no, figure out. Yeah, you guys out, have a similar look, that's for sure. Yeah, they'll talk to me and like, you know, talk to me like we're having a normal conversation. They're like, so how is Chicago? How's your brother? And I'm like, oh, you think I'm Allison? You want to know about that? <laughs> so I just can, I just tell them that you're doing fine. So don't worry. I've told everyone you're fine. Well, I appreciate that. I, at least you're giving them good news. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so I made you um, a quiz about our hometown, and I really hope that you do well because you may never be allowed back if you lose. <laughs> All right, question number one, Patrick. What's the name of the famous bluff in Red Wing? Is it A, Barn, B, Stevens, or C, Levy Bluff? A, Barn. Barn is Bluff. It, it is. Really? You see how fast he is? He yeah. knew it right away. Look at that. Happy dance. All right, and to be clear for everyone at home, it's barn. Did you notice how both of us didn't add the S? There's no plural, barn. it's barn. Everybody adds the S. Mm -hmm. It's no S. Barn bluff, got it, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, two. This one's actually kind of hard. <laughs> what size is the world's largest boot that you can see in Red Wing, Minnesota in our shoe museum? Oh, shoot. Size, 503, size <laughs> 604 and a half, or size 638 and one half? Uh, uh, B. Okay, we can't let you back in. I mean, I don't know how you didn't know it was size 638 and one half. You didn't know it. You just had a look in the car. <laughs> Fun facts about. Yeah. Okay, I think you'll know this. No pressure, though, because you just failed. What Minnesota I... college started in Red Wing? Was it A, St. Olaf, B, Gustavus Adolphus, or C, Carlton? I believe it was A. St. Olaf. Patrick. No. What? 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 It was Gustavus. It started here. Listen to you shaming him. 
<laughs> Listen, Patrick, she's shamed. He's been gone know, for I'm years. Feeling, feeling the shame over here. I know. I know. Okay. All right. I think you'll know this one. I really do. Okay. Which of these okay. statements is false? False. A. The Aurora Ski Club was one of the first ski clubs in North America. It was started in Red Wing. B. Red Wing is home to the Rydell Ice and Roller Skates. Or uh -huh. C. A scene from Fargo was filmed in Red Wing. B. Oh my gosh, Patrick, honestly, like. It, it is the home to Rydell Ice and Roller Skates. I, okay, Isn't okay, it? so you misunderstood me. My, my question was which of these is false? Because yes, Rydell was there. I knew, I thought, uh, I knew you know. He got it right. He I, got it right. Okay. So I knew you I know see. the skiing one. C. It is C. Nothing was C, right? Nothing filmed in Far for Fargo. Nothing was filmed from Fargo there. Uh, just, I'm just redeem, trying to redeem myself over here, Kendall. Yeah. You're doing great work, and um, I just want you to know that still to this day, you also owe me an autograph from Mandy Moore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of dropped the ball on that one, didn't I? You did. Um, Patrick was in Princess Diaries. Yes. And he got his sister, Allison, a CD autographed by Mandy Moore, and do you think neighbor girl Kendall across the street got one? Well, I mean... Look, I mean, if he can only get one, it's going to go to his sister. Patrick, you could have gotten me an autographed copy of a Mandy Moore CD. <laughs> she well, was a very nice person. She would have been happy to do it. So, yeah, I, I, that's my fault. Yes. <laughs> Patrick, thank you for your time, my friend. Thanks, we'll, Patrick. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you guys for talking to me. I appreciate you. Thank you. Chicago Love PD you. airs Wednesday nights on NBC. As we say in the biz, check your local listings and follow him on Instagram. PJ Fluger. I do. That's what I wanted. Remember when I was growing my hair out? Yeah, you're like, I want to like that guy I, in Chicago PD. I was like, I know him. I'm, yeah, I know. I'm not kidding. I, I actually that. do. <laughs> that was a disaster for me. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> it will be this until I die. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, everyone. Well, I just got back uh, from a trip to Florida for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World and its celebration. This time I went with a group of 10 folks uh, all together, a 10, there they are. This is us. Uh, now don't worry, this isn't gonna be like when your family forces you to watch uh, home movies. Uh, but this is the group. You'll recognize a few of the folks. They've been on our show before. The back three, there's my better half uh, to my right, screen right. And then to my left is legendary Jason Show executive producer, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> in the front row, the very, the very left, you'll recognize our foodie queen, or as our good friends in Seattle call her, the tomato lady. That's Stephanie Hansen next to my radio show executive producer, Don McLean. Lisa LaCourcier, hey, hey, Haley Hurst, uh, my girl, all my besties are right there in the front row, and uh, Jennifer Luke and their spouses and boyfriends. We moved on to Animal Kingdom. Now, come back to the TV, everybody. If you've heard about Avatar Land and you've never been there, this gives you a good description of the illusion. It, it, you know, if you've ever watched Avatar, uh, Pandora, the things kind of float in the air. Look at this. It looks like these structures are floating in the air, but they're obviously not. Uh, we can go to the next one. There we are in front of Cinderella's Castle at the Magic Kingdom adorned for the 50th anniversary. Uh, and here we are at Rise of the Resistance. This is the new 20 minute Star Wars ride that is almost impossible to get on that you hear everyone talking about. This picture right here was taken in the middle of, uh, of a Star Destroyer, which is basically the size of an airplane hangar. And there we are in front of the Millennium Falcon. And in the foreground there is our tour guide and our buddy Eric Barnett, one of Disney's best that guided us through an unbelievable unbelievable day on Sunday. I feel it just and I'll just stop here just to get sentimental for a second. I'm very, very blessed in so many ways, but I'm really blessed with those 10 people. This I've been to Disney bazillions of times. This was by far the very best trip with the very best people. And I, I want to bottle that trip and just look at it forever. We were at Epcot on Friday, uh, which this is the brand new ride for Ratatouille. I know a lot of you love that movie. This is Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. You're looking at the brand new ride. This is already at Disney Paris, but this just opened at Epcot. You board a giant mouse and you are through the perspective of Remy running through the restaurant trying to escape. Uh, it's a little 3D. Look at that. I mean, everything you get sprayed by fake champagne. 
it's a really great ride and it's basically a 4D culinary adventure and we got to do that on Friday during Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. Also on Friday at Epcot was the launch of their new fireworks show called Harmonious. Uh, we were part of the group to see it for the very first time. It debuted uh, while we were there. This is it. You see that large structure in the middle of the lake uh, that spews water. Images are projected there and fireworks happen. I will tell you rather bluntly, this disappointed me. I've seen various uh, Epcot nighttime spectaculars, as they call them, and this one for all the hullabaloo was kind of not great. I I'll have more about that in a podcast. <laughs> All the Disney parks were decked out for the 50, uh, 50th anniversary celebrations. Magic Kingdom was packed on Friday, but crowds were smaller than expected for the rest of the weekend. A lot of fans seem to be coming to the anniversary celebration for one thing and one thing only merchandise. Now, TV friends, let me tell you, do you have a picture of the Starbucks thing, Leo? I think we do. Let's go to that. One of the hottest items for the 50th anniversary was this. You're looking at the 50th anniversary Starbucks Tumblr. This is what it looks like, courtesy of Disney blogger Rose Red Disney. We couldn't find it anywhere in the park for four days. It is now reselling on various sites for around $100. And the big story other, over the weekend wasn't necessarily the, the parks, but it was on TikTok. I watched videos where mothers were punching each other in the face, punching each other in the face, trying to grab the Starbucks anniversary mugs. They would restock them when the parks open and then restock them at 2 p.m. Look, I love Disney. This was nutter. I haven't seen something like this. This is an old reference since the 80s with the Cabbage Patch Kids or the Furbies uh, in the late 90s. It was bananas. And this is what I kept thinking. The 50th celebration is lasting for 18 months. And these, all of these items will be online. You don't even have to go to the park suit. They'll all eventually be online. But it was glorious. It was just such a great time. All four of the parks were magical, no pun intended, for, for uh, different reasons. We had so much fun. Stephanie Hansen, the tomato lady, uh, w w the next time she's on the show, we got to laugh. She was our funny Debbie Downer. And one quick example, and then we'll go to break. Stephanie doesn't have a filter in her head. We think that there's a, mis there's a wire in her brain that doesn't allow her to edit. We were having a glorious time in the van going from one park to another. And the, uh, the VIP director, the tour guide was like, you know, we have a big problem with people dumping their ashes of their loved ones in the parks. And we start, you know, oh, really? That's a problem. And Stephanie goes, you want a fun fact about ashes? <laughs> Said no one ever. And she goes, did you know ashes are, you know, really not ashes. They're pieces of rock and even some teeth. at the most magical place on earth. <laughs> Stephanie tells us about the wonders of cremation. We'll be right back, back in a moment. <laughs> I know we're at Magic Kingdom, but would you like to know the joys of syphilis? That, I mean, that was just, that was all day with, with Stephanie Hansen. Welcome back to the world's shortest segment. It's time for, we'll also call it this. What is Tyra Banks wearing on Dancing with the Stars? Check this out. It's a gold snake around her. I guess it was a tribute to Britney Spears because it was on Britney night on the show. But I keep saying she wants to shift focus to her and that drives me just nutter butters. And there we go, the world's shortest segment. Thanks, Tyra. We'll be back with more after this. Welcome back, everybody. This just in, Facebook has been shut down and turned into a spirit Halloween. Uh, it's time for the surprise ending. Neither Kendall nor I know what the producers are putting here, so here we go. It's a return to my trip to Disney World. Here we are on the Slinky Dog Dash ride outside of inside Hollywood Studios. It's a roller coaster for kids, but our friend and frequent guest Stephanie Hansen thought it was a bit too much. We actually have a picture of Stephanie on the ride. Let's look at this here. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> there is Hanson on the ride, and executive producer Jeff in the front, and then next to Hanson is our friend Don McLean. Look at the joy on two of the people in the car. Uh, yeah, and here's more ride. Uh, we'll do more ride pictures tomorrow. We have a few more to make you laugh, but there we go. Hanson, I love you. I couldn't imagine the trip without you. Yeah, tomorrow, local fashion designer known as the Fly Girl will join us with different looks for a must-have fall fashion item. That's going to be fantastic. That's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.